with Harry saying, or thinking, he wasn't going to die cowering behind a headstone. He is going to die upright like his father. So, Voldemort was ready. Harry stands up, shouts, expel the Yes. Yes. Yeah, Barty Crouch Jr. Um, 663. So, Harry yells, Expelliarmus. Voldemort yells, Avada Kedavra. Green light comes from Voldemort's wand. Red light comes from Harry's wand. They meet and hit. Okay. Harry and Voldemort are raised up off the ground. They're taken somewhere else. And we get this big thing that looks like a dome of light around them. So you have Harry... Voldemort, they each have pointed their wand, and there's now this jet of light between them. Okay, cool. Neither of them know why. Golden thread connects them, and suddenly, 664, Death Eaters are moving all around. They're fig trying to figure out what's going on. Voldemort tells them, don't do anything. Do nothing unless I command you. And then Harry starts to hear this beautiful sound. A phoenix. And with the sound, it's like his little mini spy earpiece says, don't break the connection. I know, Harry told the music. I know I mustn't. Notice, he knows he can't break the connection. He can't do this. How does he know that? Yeah, I don't think that's the same. Could be. Anyways, his wand starts to vibrate. And the beam between he and Voldemort changes a little bit. His wand starts to shudder. And now he sees on this beam. I don't have a gold one. I could use a yellow highlighter, but it wouldn't erase. On this gold one, there are now these, like, bubbles of light. And... They're getting closer and closer to his. And so Harry tells himself, I can't let the bubbles touch my wand. So what does he do? As the closest speed of light moved near to Harry's wand tip, the wood beneath his fingers grew so hot, he feared it would burst into flame. He concentrated every last particle of his mind. Think about that phrase for a moment. Every last particle of his mind. Is your brain your mind? I mean, this is a big question in, in um, cognitive, among cognitive scientists and such. No, the mind is different. But what is the mind? Uh, that's the question they can't really answer. Is the mind what the brain produces? So the mind doesn't have particles. So does she really mean he focused every last particle of his brain, like he's sitting there going, <laughs> really hard. Whatever it is he's doing, he pushes it back. Notice what that does. Here's Voldemort's wand. Harry pushes it back to Voldemort's wand. What does that tell us, in and of itself? Harry's he's more powerful stronger. Than he he's stronger. I mean, Voldemort's, okay, maybe it's because Voldemort's a, a senior citizen now, you know, because he's now like 71. Eh, he's about know. 70. He's didn't he just go to Dubai? Didn't he just do what? Didn't he just go to Dubai? Really? Like, Messy Fresh? Well, yeah, I mean, you could kind of say that. Yeah, I guess his other body was the one that would be 71. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily young for a wizard. We know Dumbledore is in his hundreds. But he's Dumbledore. I mean, I don't think she's in her hundreds. I think she's in her late double digits. She's been teaching for 49 years. We find out in the next book. Okay. Anyways, he forces it back, and what happens? Voldemort's eyes get really, really big, and a hand plops out. Cool. And then... Cedric Diggory pops out. Okay. 
But notice, the hand plops out and does what? It's a disembodied hand. That is, there's no body connected to it. So I assume this isn't like Thing in the old Adams Family TV show, you know, the hand that walks around. And walks. It just lies down there. What does Cedric do? Or let me rephrase that. What does, to use the language that Dumbledore will use later, I don't have time for this. The language that Dumbledore will use later, what does the echo of Cedric do? Um, the hold on. Plops out of his wand and then does what? Smacks Voldemort? No. Walks over to Harry. We're not told how far apart they are. Are they 10 feet? Are they 20 feet? Is this the six yet 20 feet, you know, thing? We don't know. It walks out, and Harry thinks, was it a ghost? It looks so solid. And it looks up and down the golden light. Hold on, Harry. Hold on, Harry. What tense is that? It's present tense. It's right now. Its voice was distant and echoing. Hold on, Mom, Mom, Harry. Harry looks at Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort's like, don't look at me, kid. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> he no more expected this than Harry had. Why? Because Voldemort doesn't know something that Harry does know. Only thing is, the thing that Harry does know, in terms of his wand, that it has a brother wand, he doesn't know. Actually, he does know. The brother one is this one. He does know that. Voldemort doesn't know that yet. Okay. More screens of pain from the wand. And what happens? An old man comes out. Back to chapter one. It was a real wizard then. Killed me that one, did you fighting boy? Killed me? Past tense? You can only use past tense if you're speaking when? In the present. But Dumbledore is going to call this an echo. What do echoes always do? Repeat. Repeat, come after. They're always what? They're always in the past. You go to a nice big canyon that will give you good echo sounds. What part won't it echo? The very first part of the word you speak. It only speaks the latter part. It's it's always past, okay? <clears throat> you fight him, boy. Okay, that's both present tense and it's a command. <laughs> you know, it's kick his butt. But now another head's emerging. Bertha Jorkins comes out. We've not seen Bertha Jorkins, have we? Ever. Well, I'll take that back. The pensive. Dumbledore's pensive, we saw her. Don't let go. Don't let him get you. Harry, how does she know this is Harry? Does she come up? You know, because Harry's a little preoccupied right here. Does she come up and Harry goes and lifts his, what they call fringe, lifts his bangs so she can see the scar? Or is it he's so recognizable that she assumes it's got to be Harry Potter? Or is Voldemort's wand like the TARDIS? Bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Are they having like tea inside the wand? And Cedric goes, well, let me tell you that, man, Harry and I, we were. <laughs> Don't let go. Harry, she and the other two shadowy figures began to pace around the inner walls of the golden web. While the Death Eaters flit around the outside. And Voldemort's dead victims whispered as they circled the duelers. And now another head starts to emerge. In a very early printing, I don't think it was the, I don't think it was limited to the first, but it was real early printing in both the British and the American editions. It's different than what you have in yours, unless you have a very, very early first edition, okay? Because what comes is your mother's coming, he said quickly. She has, in that very, very early printing, James comes next. And then Lily. 
which is wrong. Because how are they coming out? In the order they died. In the order they died. Reverse so order. what died first? Hand. <laughs> and then Cedric. Oh. And then Frank Price. Wait, and then Bertha Jorkins, because Bertha Jorkins was killed in the fourth time. Wormtail. He created it. But his he gave, didn't do that. Yeah. He, he, whenever he came back. Well, he that's Lord kind of true. <laughs> He did it for it was willingly like he he got a knife and he he used the knife. But he gave him the silver hand. Not till later. Yeah. And he's still stumpy right now? Yeah. He's oh. still huh. Wait. No. No, 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 no. That is or that is yep. He does have the silver hand now. Sorry. So that's where that came from. That was the last spell he, what? Got. he gives him a gives him the silver. I'm kinda with you, Caitlin. He doesn't use the wand to <laughs> To know. chop the hand off. But Anyways. He does give it the but hand. he does make a hand for him. Right? Right. Okay. So. <clears throat> her mother comes out. Woman with long hair. Your father's coming. Hold on for your father. And then notice what she says. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. You know, for a child in a two-parent loving family, a functional, non-dysfunctional family, something really bad happens, one of the parents will, slash should, say to a child when something really bad happens, it'll be okay. So-and-so will what? Make it better. It'll be all right. This is something she's not been able to say for how long? Quite a while. Uh, nearly 13 years. Okay? Your father's coming. It'll be all right. Hold on. Now, put yourself in Harry's shoes at this moment. What do you feel like doing, maybe? Reaching out. Reaching out? <laughs> you know, <laughs> bawling like a baby? Yes. yes. Okay. And he came. First his head, then his body, tall, untidy, like Harry. And what happens? When the connection is broken, Notice what James understands. In fact, it's kind of what they all understand. Because what do they keep saying? Hold on, Harry, Cedric says. Why? I don't think Cedric's saying, hold on, Harry. You, you just keep him because if you, and psh, he's going to zap you. I don't think he's saying that. I think Cedric is saying, hold on, why? Help's coming. Help's coming. Right? Frank Price, you fight him, boy. Bertha Jorkins. Hold on, his mother, it'll be all right. And then James, when the connection is broken, we will linger for only moments, but we'll give you time. You must get to the port key. How in the world does James know there's a port key? How does he even know what's going on? He's an echo. If he's an echo of his former self, what should be the only thing James is saying, you're not killing my son, you dirty, rotten, you know, slimy, snake-faced lizard. And then he dies. What should be the last thing, or what should be what we hear Lily say? No, not Harry. No, take me. That's an echo. But what are these, each one of these echoes showing? They know the present and what's going on. They know the present. They know what's going on. How can you know the present and what's going on if you're, quote, unquote, totally, undeniably, separately dead? <laughs> Magic? Or is their state here like what he sees in the mirror of Arisa? What I'm getting at is, is maybe Dumbledore's explanation for them not the entire truth? Yeah, it could be sort of like a false, uh, not really a false truth, but something where it kind of keeps him from wanting to linger towards that thing. Okay, Devin? Um, do you think that these uh, echoes coming out of the wand that remember waving at Harry in the mirror? No idea. No idea. Like nothing. I'm wondering I, if there's that bridge. The reason the reason I say no idea is because 
I have nothing in the text that indicates that. Okay. What I all I have to go by for my interpretation is what's on the pages. Okay. And it seems to me, based upon what we've seen in the Mirror of Erised, what we see here, what we're going to see in Book Five, because I, because I've read these so many times, I now read one through four in light of books five, six, and seven, also. Okay. If it's your very first time reading it, you obviously you can't do that. But Harry's going to see something in book five. He's going to go into a room, and he and two other people are going to hear. Something in this room that nobody else hears. But the two other people that hear these things, or at least one other pe persons that Harry talks to, are going to hear things, but these are people who have seen loved ones die. And it gets made pretty clear later on, that room is the room of death. And what they are hearing is they are hearing people, quote, on the other side of the veil. The veil that separates the living over here from the dead over here. Okay. I think what's happening right here, the veil is being lifted briefly. And then it's going to go back down. Why? We will linger only a short time. We're here for a moment, Harry. Listen to what we're saying. That's how they know, present tense, what's going on. Okay. So, What's he say? Get to the port key. Okay, notice. Get to the port key. What does Harry have in his hand? And what can he now do pretty pretty well? Accio. Accio port key. Okay. Question, Taylor. Okay. I don't understand why James comes out first. Because he doesn't come out first. He comes out I mean, last. Because he was still before Lily. It's it's in reverse order. So the first one killed earliest. Um, uh, would be but James. Lily, Lily was killed at the very last moment, like of his life. Yeah, but okay. Here's the one. Uh -huh. What comes out first? Hand, right? So, hand. Then Cedric. Then Frank Bryce. Bertha. Then Bertha Jorkins. And then Lily. Then Lily Potter. Then, who was killed before Lily was killed? James. James. Then, if they kept that, yeah. every person that he would have killed would come out. If he had kept it, let's jump to the end of book seven, <laughs> for just briefly. Who would be the very last person to come out? Like or pretty close. Moody Myrtle's actually killed by the um, basilisk. Yeah, but he was there. Yeah, yeah, he was controlling the basilisk. I mean, let's say people come out and watch the scene. Let's say people killed specifically by the wand. It would probably be either his father or his grandparents, because they're all killed at the same time. Okay. Um, or possibly nah, I shouldn't mention. Nah, I'm not going to mention any other. So, this is, where'd he go? James. This is why he comes out last. It's not in order necessarily of, it's like in, order in of Harry's order. life. No, it's just the most recent to farther back. Right, but the farthest back is Lily. I don't get uh -uh. it. Lily's he's, not the farthest back. Because he's still, while he's going up the stairs, James, and then when he gets to the room... That's it's then Lily. Lily. And then right. After, so then right after I feel Lily, like I'm really is, not getting what you guys are saying. So he killed, he it, killed it, James, then he killed Lily. Lily. So think of it this way. Back. You got a clock. Okay? He comes in. Right. It's one o'clock. Yeah. He kills James at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Takes him a long time to get upstairs. <laughs> so James is killed here. He kills Lily next. It's three o'clock. He tries to kill Harry at let's say four o'clock, right, but he doesn't. Put that in reverse order. Lily comes out first. Lily did come, come out first. And James came out last. Wait a minute, no, never mind. Forget <laughs> I said that. He kills. Two. Oh, okay, I don't See? care. I don't care. <laughs> so if you keep going back, then what? Then you get Bertha Jorkins many years later. Then you get Frank Bryce. Then you get 
Cedric Diggory, then you get the hand. Okay, I guess I understand, but like from like what I was seeing as like if you put him in a line, like Lily was killed last. But you're so thinking at the like end go. of his life. She's she's killed last in terms of Harry's experience. In Harry's experience, his father is killed before his mother. But that's not the perspective. The, the perspective is from when the wand did its nefarious deeds. Okay? okay. So. Yeah, and this is, I think this is exactly why. I'm with the first edition. In a <laughs> early printing, she's got these two, and I'm pretty sure these printings are like huge and expensive. Because every subsequent one, it's been fixed. Okay? Because those came out like that. So, you got to go, he says, get to the port key. Harry says, yes, I understand. Get to the port key, get back to Hogwarts. Why? Safety. That's where Dumbledore is. Okay? And then what happens? Cedric's got a... Said a you-know-what. I mean... Harry, take my body back. Okay. I'm Harry. I'll come back for it later. No. Does Harry know at this point about inferior, impossible uses of dead bodies? No, he doesn't. Because he doesn't read. Right? Her, if this were Hermione, she would say, it's okay, I'm not going to let them do that or anything else. He's a little busy, right? He's a little preoccupied. He's still got to get to the port key. Yeah, okay, Cedric. By saying, I'll do it, or I will, what's he essentially suggesting? He's going to risk his life for a bag of meat. For a carcass, for a corpse. Because where is Cedric? <laughs> Cedric's walking around. The body's lying over here. You know, Bugs are already starting. Metaphorically speaking, it's not really that quick. So, Harry yells, now, he pulls his wand upward, and they all go after Voldemort. Why is Voldemort so flipped out about all this? Because he just had spirits or something crawl out of his wand. Okay, very good. Everyone in what does that show him? What's his name mean? Flee or fly from death. He's afraid of death. He is, pun intended, mortally afraid of dying. Okay. Weren't the ghosts also basically the same thing where Harry and Larry, they were basically copies of the, how are you going to die, how are you going to die? Well, yeah, I would think so. Who wants to kill you worse? The loved one of someone you killed or the person you actually killed if they had the ability to come back and kill you? Yeah, it would be that person. Okay? And that's what he's he can't handle. That's why he gave the whole big long speech before his monologuing, remember? Because what did he say? I who went farther than anybody else along what? He called it the path to immortality. Don't want it. I mean, what was he willing to do, first book? To get Half immortal. Half immortal. No, nope, not kill a baby. No? Nope. Uh, drink unicorn blood. Drink unicorn blood. And what does Ferenz tell him? That will give you a cursed existence. That is from that moment on, you live a cursed life. What does Harry say? Why would you want to it would be better to die then, wouldn't it? He's an 11 year old. It would be better to die than to live that kind of existence. By the way, Mr. Potter, do you know of anything else that would restore you to life? Something that is hidden up at the school right now? Notice all the little teaching moments. Notice also what Harry brings up in that first book. And then Dumbledore reaffirms it with his final comments. Harry says it would be better to die. Dumbledore says what about death? To the well-organized well mind. Just a thought, but do you think 
I don't know how the whole effects of the unicorn blood wear off, but do you think that could have been ultimately his downfall to everything because he started drinking it and gave him the cursed life, so he potentially bad luck for the rest of his life? Can no. Talk about why no. Not. I mean, just, not ultimately. Or does it just wear off? Have you read the other books? Yeah. yeah. It's it's because of what we learn at the end of book six and in book seven, which I won't give it away. Do you think if the situation right then wasn't so serious, James would probably be going up to him and being like, hi, I got your nose, I got your nose, I got your nose. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> At what point did he lose his hair? It was this one, right? When he yeah. came out of the cauldron? I'm, I'm going to say from that, he just didn't care. Anymore. Yeah, it's not that he doesn't have it, though. You're thinking the films. No, I know. Where he's, you know. <laughs> I know. Um, the, the Red Skull from the Avengers takes over Voldemort's body kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's described as having snake-like eyes. They're red and slit-like. So I'm snake-like or what else like? Cat-like. Cats have cats don't have round pupils. They got slits. Okay, so very very similar. He's very handsome. Yeah, things. He's hunkatastic, you know, as. <laughs> Young Tom Riddle, and then he becomes Snake Face Man, you know. So, <laughs> Harry gets the body, he goes back, he tries to tell people Diggory's dead, Cedric's Diggory's dead. Mad Eye takes him, they go back up to the castle. He says, I don't tell me who's running for Senate, I don't give a damn. Um, page 676. Moody says, 676, after he's told Harry it was me, it can't be you. Who put your name in the goblet? I did. Hasn't been easy, Harry, guiding me through these tasks. Why? Because, he says, I had to contend with your stupidity. Wow, a teacher who tells the truth. The second task, that was when I was most afraid we would fail. I was keeping watch on you. You hadn't worked out things. Yeah, but Cedric, give me. Who told Cedric? Well, Cedric told Harry in the maze. Somebody gave me a hint. Right? Decent people are so easy to manipulate, Potter. Why? Why are decent people easy to manipulate? Keep going. They care about helping others. They care about helping others? They'll always try to do the right thing. That's easy to pinpoint. Like the that. right thing meaning what, though? What do they never assume about other people? That they're bad, they're evil, they're out to get them. In other words, they assume about other people what they think kind of about themselves. They're decent. They're honorable. They're trustworthy. Okay? Why does Harry tell Cedric about the dragons? It's only fair, Harry says. Is fairness a quality of Gryffindor? No, it's not. Boldness, daring, nerve, courage, those are. What house is fairness quality? Oh. No? Ravenclaw's all smarts. It doesn't get any other adjectives. It wasn't fair. It's just smarts. It's it's fairness. It's justice, in fact. Okay? So Moody's threatening Harry. What did he say? He said, you know, I told you once. Can't stand a Death Eater that never, you know, suffered for the Dark Lord. And what do we see? Page 679. Dumbledore uncloaked. This is Dumbledore the White. You know, He's no longer Dumbledore the Gray. At that moment, page 679, Harry fully understood for the first time, because what does Harry still not know about Mad-Eye? That he's not Mad-Eye. That he's not Mad-Eye. <laughs> He understood for the first time why people said Dumbledore was the only wizard Voldemort had ever feared. The look upon Dumbledore's face as he stared down at the unconscious form of Mad-Eye Moody was more terrible than Harry could ever have imagined. There was no benign smile on Dumbledore's face. There was cold fury in every line of the ancient face, and what? A sense of power radiated from Dumbledore, as though he were giving off burning heat. And I kind of think, and I, you know, here's where I'll read into the text a little bit, as though... I think he is. I think if Harry went up and touched me close, oh, damn, you're hot. Not 
<laughs> you can go all slash fiction if you want, believe me. Everything's been said, and I don't know if you keep up with Rolling. She's gone completely off her rocker. Uh, she came out, when was this? Last week? Two weeks ago? Came out, and in the DVD release of The Crimes of Grindelwald, says in an interview, not only that Dumbledore and Grindelwald had a relationship, they had a passionate sexual relationship. Okay? Uh, which has caused people on all sides, of the, all ends of the spectrum, to attack her. I mean, traditional conservative-minded people, you know, we don't really know, need to know that, too much information, etc. People on the left side, LGBT groups, etc., saying she is merely trying to be quote-unquote inclusive and capitalize. Why? Because the books have already sold her a billion dollars. If, if she was really inclusive, we would have known this in the books. We would have seen she's pandering to an audience. Okay? In other words. So, what does Dumbledore reveal to Harry? Not that he's gay. <laughs> he opens what? Uh, he opens the chest. How far down is he? He has to go through what? Seven layers? <laughs> and he's... Oh, there's Mad Eye. So who's this guy? Barty Crouch Jr. Let's cut to the chase. So they give Barty Crouch, Crouch Jr. Veritas Serum. What does he reveal? Everything. What does he reveal? His whole plan. Okay. His whole, his whole how far back does it go? When did he get out of Azkaban? Whenever uh, his mother was dying. Which was? Like a year before. A year after he was brought in. Which, golly gee, when does that? When could that have been? Is that prophecy was given? Not the same time as the prophecy was given. So what did Barty Crouch Sr. do? He brought him home and did what? He put him under an Imperius curse. And how long was he under that Imperius curse? For 12 years. Think of Trelawney's prophecy. 12 years. My servant has been chained. He will what? Be free tonight. Well, what do we hear? He broke free of his father's imperious curse and did what? Thanks, Dad. You know, did it back to him. Barty Crouch this entire year has been under the control of an imperious curse. So, is the prophecy referring to Peter Pettigrew, who isn't actually chained? That is, he's in his rat form. Why? Self-protection. Barty Crouch Jr. is under an imperious curse and invisible for what purposes? Because he's not supposed to be alive. He's not supposed to be alive. What did Barty Crouch Sr. do in removing his son from prison? Broke, Broke a whole bunch of laws. Okay. So why does he go and look in the Forest, when they hear the Moors Mordra and see the skull, Junior got out. <laughs> okay, so we're going to skip a bunch. They bring in Winky and go to the parting of the ways in the ten, five minutes we have left. Um, let's see here. Notice who's there, by the way, for this little interview. Snape, McGonagall, okay, Dumbledore. So Snape has seen all this. Okay. Um, they talk about Diggory and such. Dumbledore, 694, 695, takes Harry upstairs, and Sirius shows up, and Dumbledore says, I need you to tell me everything you saw tonight. Everything. Seriously, like, come on, man. give him a break. Let him sleep. Dumbledore, if I thought it would help you, I'd give you a sleeping potion, Harry. Why? 
because he says, allowing you to postpone the moment when you would have to think about what has happened tonight, I would do it, but I know better. Numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. How many of you have ever had something physically wrong and you've had some kind of numbing agent given to you? And then you have to let that numbing agent wear off. It hurts how much more once that happens. Yeah, that's minor. You know, use my example of torn rotator cuff. Or partial shoulder replacement. Before I had that done, I watched some videos of, of what they do. Get on YouTube. I mean, you could watch everything. It's all just great, you know. Because what do they do? Well, they cut your arm open. They put you in a chair, and you're at some ungodly angle. And then, they, you know, essentially take a hammer and chisel. And chisel it all away. And then shove a titanium rod down it. Well, eventually... You feel that pain. <laughs> Unless you're sitting there just squeezing that morphine pump, you know. But eventually they take the morphine away and it kicks in. Dumbledore is saying, I could let you sleep for a year, kid. You're going to have to come out and what? What does every one of us ultimately have to face? Our past, right? We have to face ourselves. We have to face the bad things that have happened to us, we've got to own up to them, whether we cause them or somebody else caused them. Okay? you got to deal with it, Harry. You can't just bury those pains. So Harry tells him everything. 696. He, he told me, he said the protection my, my mother left to me, he'd have it too. And he's right. He could touch me. And it didn't hurt him. For a fleeting instant, Harry thought he saw a gleam of something like triumph in Voldemort's, excuse me, in Dumbledore's eyes. When this book first came out, the internet was a buzz with people thinking Dumbledore was in cahoots with Voldemort. And then when they saw that glimmer of victory, it was like, you planned it. You were helping him. Well, no, it's just that at this point, without giving it away, Dumbledore knows how to defeat Voldemort. All right? But it won't be easy. So, Harry tells him about this. And Sirius says, Diggory came back to life? Notice, Harry said something, and Dumbledore said, so that means some form of Cedric must have reappeared. Sirius interprets that. Oh, so he came back to life. Dumbledore noticed. No. <laughs> Why? No spell can reawaken the dead. Nope. He's dead. Uh, let's call it an echo. So these echoes come out and say some things. Okay? So Dumbledore explains about the Priori and Cantatum curse, uh, excuse me, charm. How is this different than the Priori and Cantatum that was used in the clearing at the Quidditch World Cup? Because they used it there to make Harry's wand spit out the Morse Morgan thing. Well, it's because Harry's wand and Voldemort's wand are brothers. How are they brothers? They have the same, they have the same, they have the same core. A phoenix feather. Harry's wand is made out of holly. Evergreen, red berries, thorns. The thorns on a holly leaf, Middle Ages. We're taken to be like the crown of thorns Christ wore, the red berries, the blood, the holly evergreen, it's ever living, it's everlasting, it doesn't die. His wand is made out of you. You is one of only a very, very few plants that is poisonous. What's his patronus? A stag. It's one of the very, very few plants that is poisonous to deer. His Patronus is a deer, so don't eat the wand, kind of a thing. Um, okay, we're out of time. We'll finish the last 15, 20 pages on Monday and get into the ungodly bloated Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> Shut up, Siri. <laughs>